Hello everyone, uh, my name is Piotr. I'm an assistant professor of economics at Northwestern University. Uh, I'm going to talk today about my joint work with uh, Zhang Tao Li uh, from Singapore Management University about optimality of simple mechanisms when agents are unsophisticated. First, a simple observation that uh, real life economic agents are typically not as rational as they are in our models. And the literature hasn't been oblivious to that, to that fact. There uh, have been multiple attempts in the literature recently, especially, to define various notions of simple mechanisms in which agents should be able to easily, in some sense, identify an optimal strategy. And in this paper, we're going to look exactly at the sort of strategic simplicity. And roughly speaking, by simplicity, we're going to understand the following property of a mechanism. We're going to make an assumption about the level of sophistication of the agents, and we're going to call a mechanism simple if agents can determine their optimal strategy in the mechanism. Otherwise, we're going to call a mechanism complex. So in a complex mechanism, by definition, at least one agent is going to be strategically confused, which means that that agent cannot select uh, an optimal strategy, or at least the designer is unable to predict how the agent will behave based on that assumption about the agent's rationality. To give you a concrete example, suppose that agents cannot make any predictions about other agents' strategies, and they also cannot engage in contingent reasoning. Uh, Sheng uh, famously showed in his job market paper that in this case, simple mechanisms using the definition above um, are equal to the class of obviously strategy proof mechanisms or OSP mechanisms for short. So in an OSP mechanism, even such unsophisticated agents can still determine their optimal strategy. But if you give them a non-OSP mechanism, then at least one of the agents will be strategically confused. They will not know what to do. Or again, it, again um, alternatively, the designer will, will not be confident what the outcome of the mechanism will be. We are going to focus on OSP for this talk. However, I do want to mention that in the paper, we're also looking at other solution concepts and other um, assumptions about agents' rationality. So you can look at dominant strategy implementation or you can, for example, think about strongly OSP mechanisms, which is an even stronger um, solution concept than OSP. And it was introduced uh, by a very nice paper by Picha and Troyan, which actually won uh, the best paper award at DC uh, two years ago. But let's focus on OSP for today. So what's the typical story in some sense uh, in the literature? That when agents are unsophisticated, we should use a simple mechanism so that we know how they will behave, so that we can predict play. And we, uh, in this paper, want to propose an alternative story, which is that maybe when agents are unsophisticated, that's precisely when we want to use a complex mechanism to simply achieve higher payoffs. Okay? And we want this story to be true in, in some cases, even if we take participation into account. So we, we do realize that complex mechanisms may be seen as, as uh, less attractive to the agents themselves. So we want to show that this may sometimes be the true story in, in, in some sense even if we take these uh, incentives into account. Okay? And so the main message of the paper will be that even uh, though using a, a simple mechanism allows the designer to predict play, this may sometimes at least be insufficient to justify the use of simple mechanisms. And so here's uh, more precisely how we're going to proceed in our approach. We're going to take seriously that sort of behavioral foundation or, or assumption underlying the justification for simple mechanisms. Uh, for today, again, we look at OSP, so we're going to make the assumption that agents cannot make predictions about other agents' strategies and cannot engage in contingent reasoning. The prediction about behavior that we can derive from that assumption is precisely that agents will not play an obviously dominated strategy, and they will play an obviously dominant strategy if they have one. Correspondingly, uh, the class of simple mechanisms is the class of OSP mechanisms. In such a simple mechanism, there is a unique outcome and we can uniquely predict the expected payoff for the designer. In a complex mechanism, in this case, a non-OSP mechanism, uh, there will not be such a unique prediction of the outcome, and therefore, there will be a range of possible payoffs for the designer. So what we're going to show is that there are some cases in which a complex mechanism uh, leads to a strictly higher payoff for the designer, strictly higher than in the best simple mechanism, even under the most adversarial selection from the range of possible payoffs. So even if we take the worst case scenario when it comes to this um, resolution of strategic confusion, it can still be the case that the complex mechanism is strictly better for the designer. Now, for the most of this talk, I'm just going to focus on a simple example to illustrate that possibility. 
I will later tell you briefly what else we do in the paper more generally. In this simple example, we'll look at revenue maximization and OSP as a solution concept. There is a trading platform that intermediates trade between two dealers, A and B. And the platform, as I said, is trying to maximize revenue. Each dealer can either buy or sell one unit of the asset. The platform doesn't hold inventory, so it has to clear the market exposed. Uh, each dealer will have two possible values uh, for the asset. Uh, these values uh, are positively correlated. It doesn't matter in terms of, if you think of current marketing mechanism, it will have nothing to do with that. But uh, there is this positive correlation of values. So um, dealer A has a value of zero or a value of two thirds. Dealer B has a value of one third or a value of one. And this is the joint distribution of these values. Okay, so we want to look at the best OSP mechanism. So let me first recall the definition of obvious dominance. Uh, strategy S obviously dominates strategy S prime if at any earliest information set from which they diverge, from which they prescribe different actions, the worst that can happen under S is still better than the best that could happen under S prime, where the worst and best is understood as, as being taken over all possible choices of opponents and nature. That's the definition. Um, and then Sheng Wu in his paper showed that personalized clock auctions are OSP. We can prove a similar um, result for our setting that at least the best uh, mechanism in the setting is in fact um, a personalized clock auction. It looks like this. So you first go to dealer A and you ask if she would like to sell the asset at a price of zero. If she says yes, then she sells the asset to dealer B at a price of zero. If she says no, then we go to dealer B and we ask if she would like to sell the asset at a higher price of one third. If she says yes, then this trade happens at a price of one third. Otherwise, there is no trade. The game ends up um, uh, with no trade between the dealers. Now, whenever there is trade, the platform will charge a fee of one third to the buyer. That's the mechanism. To compute the expected profit of the platform, we just have to multiply the fee of one third times the probability of trade. And to compute that, we need to compute the equilibrium in obviously dominant strategies. And this will be a very, a very easy exercise, so I'll just go through this very quickly. Uh, type zero of dealer A is, is willing to accept that initial offer of zero. Uh, type two thirds, of course, doesn't want to um, sell at a, at a price below her value, so she'll reject. And then for dealer B, type one third is willing to accept that offer, but type one will reject. So these are the obviously uh, dominant strategy. You can easily verify that. So what is the expected profit? Well, we have trade uh, in all cases except for one, and namely when the type of dealer A is uh, two thirds and the type of dealer B is one. So we can easily compute the probability that the type profile is different uh, than this particular realization. It's three over five. And so the profit in, in this mechanism is uh, one over five. Now, I obviously won't have time to prove that this is the optimal uh, mechanism. You can look at the, uh, for, at a proof in the paper. But I do want to provide some intuition for why there is inefficient trade in this mechanism. Because indeed, these two types, two thirds and one, do not trade even though they could. And the intuition is the usual one. Um, so basically, we want to distort the allocation rule to minimize information rents. In this particular case, we don't have this efficient trade between these two types, two thirds and one, because then type zero would no longer have an obviously dominant strategy. She gets zero in this uh, under this strategy in equilibrium. And she could get sometimes at least a, a strictly positive payoff if these two types, uh, two thirds and one, traded at some uh, at some price. This is why this mechanism, even though it's revenue maximizing, is not uh, efficient. Now I want to talk about a different mechanism, which you can view as a descending personalized clock auction. Uh, it's a it's a similar mechanism in principle, but now we're going to gradually drop the price, and it's slightly more complicated. We first go to dealer B and we ask if she would like to buy the asset at a price of one. If she rejects, we drop the price to two thirds, we go to dealer A. If dealer A rejects, we drop the price further to one third, and we ask dealer B if she would like to trade. Only if dealer B says no, then there is no trade. Again, the fee is one third, this time charged to the seller. This is the alternative mechanism. Now, um, this mechanism will not be uh, OSP. Okay, but nevertheless, three of the four types have obviously dominant strategies, and um, I will go quickly through this part. So type zero of dealer A, of course, is not willing to buy at a price of two thirds. Type two thirds is willing to buy at two thirds. These are obviously dominant strategies. And similarly, type one third of dealer B 
has an obviously um, dominant strategy to reject the initial offer, but accept that second offer. So now we get to the interesting type, type one of dealer B. Let's look at all the possibilities. If type one accepts that initial offer of one, then she gets a payoff of zero for sure. Okay. If instead she rejects that initial offer and tries to accept the second offer, then there are two possibilities depending on what dealer A does, right? If dealer A says yes to, to her offer, then uh, dealer B is in fact uh, forced to sell the asset at a price below her value. So she makes a loss, a strict loss. If she's lucky and dealer A says no to the offer, then she gets to buy the asset at a lower price strictly below her value. So she gets a strictly positive profit. So looking at these two strategies, we conclude that uh, type one of dealer B is going to be strategically confused. Based on the assumptions we have made, uh, type one simply cannot decide or we cannot determine what type one will do. Okay? There's one thing we can be certain of, which is that type one will not reject both offers. And that's because rejecting both offers is obviously dominated by the strategy of accepting the second offer. Okay? So that's the only prediction we can make, but we otherwise cannot tell what type one will do. And so here comes the punchline, the kind of surprising thing about this example. It actually doesn't matter what type one will do. Okay? Even though she's confused, it doesn't matter because no matter which of these two possibilities will materialize, the platform always collects the fee of one third. There's always trade, okay? no matter what, how type one will behave. Um, we always end up with trade and therefore the platform makes a profit of one third, not only in expectation, but exposed. And this is, this is obviously um, strictly better then the best the platform could do with a simple mechanism, uh, okay, which only uh, gave a profit of one fifth. Okay, so I want to pause here and, and emphasize, in some sense, how striking this uh, this example is. At least it was striking to us at first. This effectively shows that we, we fixed an assumption about agents' rationality, what they can do, um, and without changing the assumption, we we only looked at a possibility of, of a mechanism without an equilibrium. In some sense, a mechanism where uh, we cannot predict what's going to happen. And we show that no matter what happens, that mechanism delivers a strictly higher payoff uh, to the designer, the platform, strictly higher revenue. Okay? And, and in this sense, it's unambiguously preferred to use um, that complex mechanism. Right. So whenever this happens, whenever the complex mechanism unambiguously outperforms the best simple mechanism, uh, we call that strong dominance. Or of course, the adjective strong indicates that it's a strict improvement even uh, under the most adversarial selection um, from, from the set of possible uh, outcomes. Okay. I want to make one more comment about this example before I, uh, before I go on. And it's uh, a comment about participation. So we might be naturally concerned that dealer B would not want to participate in this mechanism, anticipating that she will be confused. However, uh, if we treat participation or non-participation as just another strategy, then in fact, we can be sure that dealer B will want to participate. And that's because non-participation, which gives you zero for sure, is in fact obviously dominated by the strategy of accepting the initial offer. We can make it strictly obviously dominated by, by lowering the price by epsilon. Okay? And so in this sense, at least, all of the dealers want to participate in this mechanism, even though it's, it's complex. Okay, so what do we do in the paper beyond the example? First of all, we want to put some limits on this, in some sense, negative example by proving a result uh, which identifies environments for which strong dominance of the best simple mechanism is not possible. Okay? Uh, and this is, in some sense, an optimality foundation for simple mechanism because it, it says that at least they cannot be strongly dominated by a complex one. Uh, to give you a flavor of this result, I'm going to tell you intuitively what, this, uh, what the assumption is of that result. And the assumption is that in the best simple mechanism, the IC constraints should only bind along the edges of some tree in the type space. That sounds abstract, but uh, one case you might be familiar with is that uh, in some cases only local uh, downward IC constraints uh, bind, and that will satisfy the assumptions of the result and will produce the, the conclusion that um, a simple mechanism will in fact be optimal in the sense of not being strongly dominated by a complex one. And one canonical environment where this will hold is just the Myerson optimal auction in the regular case. So we can predict that in these canonical environments, such weird examples uh, could not be constructed. So that's somewhat reassuring. But then we also show some more negative results. So we show that uh, 
this type of example of strong dominance can be extended to many other environments and many other objective functions. In particular, we identified conditions under which strong dominance is always possible for at least some objective function. And two quick remarks here. First, uh, we showed that strong dominance is possible even when there is just one agent in the mechanism, in which case the designer might use randomization to confuse the agent. And second, uh, strong dominance is not just about revenue maximization. Uh, so it's not just about exploiting the agents, uh, extracting rents. It can also be helpful to use a complex mechanism when the designer actually cares about the agent's welfare. We have such examples in the paper as well. And finally, in the last part of the paper, we'll look at weak dominance. Uh, so strong dominance requires that the, the complex mechanism is always strictly better than the, than the best simple mechanism. Weak dominance is more permissive. It says only that the uh, complex mechanism should never be worse, and it is sometimes strictly better. And in fact, we showed that weak dominance is very often possible. So in many environments, including in most environments when the designer is interested in revenue, it is possible to weakly dominate uh, the best simple mechanism. I don't have time to talk about literature in detail. I just want to make one quick remark, which is, uh, which is the following one, that both in the CS literature and in, in, in economics literature, there are many papers uh, asking the following question. How does the payoff, optimal payoff of the designer depend on the solution concept? So as we vary the solution concept, can we do better or not? Uh, say we look at Bayesian implementation and then a dominant strategy implementation. Can we, uh, can we do strictly better with Bayesian? implementation. So we ask a very different question, just to be uh, clear about this, right? Because we actually fix a solution concept, or we fix the assumption about what agents can actually do in the mechanism. And then we show that you can actually sometimes be strictly better off by looking at mechanisms without equilibria, where you cannot predict what's going to happen. So, And of course, we're going to evaluate the payoff from that complex mechanism where you don't know what's going to happen by looking at the worst case scenario that brings our work closer to the tradition of, of computer science. So let me summarize. When agents are unsophisticated, it might be tempting to use a simple mechanism because it allows the designer to predict play. However, we showed that sometimes it may be better to sacrifice that prediction ability to simply achieve better payoffs. So we can sometimes make the mechanism complex and unambiguously improve the payoff uh, for the designer. And I believe that the final takeaway is not that there is something wrong with simplicity or, or with simple mechanisms, but instead, you should carefully examine uh, the environment that, that you study before you decide whether to use a simple or a complex mechanism. It's not just a function of sophistication of the agents. You have to carefully examine the environment to determine if, in fact, um, simplicity is optimal. I'm going to stop here by showing you directions for future research, which I genuinely hope this community can pursue further. Thank you very much for your attention.